Hello. A little over 350 years ago, a great French philosopher and mathematician, Blaise Pascal, experienced a powerful conversion to Christ. I just want to read something of his reflection on his conversion. The Year of Grace, 1654. Monday, 23rd of November, Feast of St. Clement, Pope and Martyr. From about half past ten in the evening until half past midnight, fire. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Not of philosophers and scholars. Certainty, certainty, heartfelt joy, peace. God of Jesus Christ, God of Jesus Christ, my God and your God. Thy God shall be my God. The world forgotten and everything except God. He can only be found by the ways taught in the Gospels. Greatness of the human soul. O righteous Father, the world had not known thee, but I have known thee. Joy, 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 tears of joy. I have cut myself off from him. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. My God, will thou forsake me? Let me not be cut off from him for ever. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, I have cut myself off from him, shunned him, decried him, crucified him. Let me never be cut off from him. We cling to him only by the ways taught in the gospel. Sweet and total renunciation. Total submission to Jesus Christ and to my director. Eternal joy in return for one day's trial on earth. I will not forget your word. Well, I think they're very powerful words, aren't they? Uh, powerful how someone... Uh, so accomplished in the scholarship and uh, attainment of uh, worldly wisdom could be so transformed by an encounter, a living encounter with Christ. And who knows what opportunities are being opened for us personally in our life to go deeper into our discipleship. Who knows the people that um, we encounter perhaps in, in difficulty and through uh, uh, even only virtual means now, but the things that God might be working in the lives of so many people around us. I think this is a, a good time for us to be speaking about God's grace in Jesus, for us to be living that life of Christian discipleship, to show the character of uh, what it means to be drawn into the life of God, to be, as Pascal said, to endure the uh, tribulations of the world for a day but with the knowledge of eternal glory firmly in our hearts and expectations. It's been a pretty turbulent time for us all, I think. Uh, you've been receiving lots of requests to complete uh, JobKeeper forms uh, so that the uh, Diocese of Melbourne can uh, apply for some of the government uh, assistance for uh, all of us who are part of um, uh, the ministry and life of the Diocese of Melbourne. So thank you for doing that. I know the the time frames to turn that round have been quite brief, but thank you for your cooperation and thank you for those uh, members of parishes who've completed uh, the um, returns that were asked to help us at the back end of the application substantiate the, the qualifications that we need of the, the loss of income uh, to qualify for that JobKeeper measure. Uh, it'll be something that through to um, the end of September when it runs out, I think quite helpful in uh, assisting us through these very difficult times, but. Well, what a wonderful thing that I'm hearing stories of the, uh, the, the generosity and the sacrifice of uh, many people in their online giving. Uh, some people going to quite extreme measures where people uh, can't uh, uh, access uh, online donations to go and receive uh, offertory envelopes and so on. So um, it's been a great response all around. So thank you for everyone's uh, efforts in, in that area because through all this time, I think, uh, as Pascal said, we need to be not just looking at the present day troubles and tribulation, but have a strong vision of what's possible for the future, how our ministry is going to be active and vital 
in all of the, the emergence as we come to the bridge that's being built for a, a new future, helping to shape that new future, understand how we can be present in new ways in community. And uh, thanks for those who are really making all of the connections amongst uh, the volunteers. I know some people have got uh, off shops in their parishes and they're really making a great effort to keep some of those volunteers connected because we know how meaningful many of these things are for people's uh, sense of their own uh, well-being, their own mental health, their own sense of personal value and um, not really as uh, aware of those things until you can stop participating in them. So even little things like that and the, uh, the effort that many of us are making to keep connected uh, is a, a great and a very um, significant gift. I've also been reading a little bit about the period of time in the 1890s when there was a, a great uh, economic depression, uh, particularly in Melbourne. Uh, many of the banks failed, it was a collapse of the property boom, and it was during the episcopate of the third bishop, Field Flowers Go. And uh, just the inspiration I take from uh, how the church at that time endured uh, a great reversal of its uh, financial fortunes, but actually came out of it with a stronger determination. Uh, many new churches were started, uh, the clergy and uh, the church members endured great hardship, and Bishop Go uh, led uh, his uh, community of that time into um, uh, a time that could be built on with, uh, with real opportunity. So I think we should be planning the same sort of expectations. What opportunities is God seeking us to discern in our ministry here amongst uh, the people of Melbourne and Geelong? Let's have a big vision as we emerge from this COVID-19 crisis that we're um, not just shaped by our present experience, or shaped by a longing for a past that isn't going to be with us anymore, but what's the future look like that we're being called to embrace with hope and with courage? And returning to Blaise Pascal, I just want to read one prayer, which is uh, a prayer that uh, uh, he wrote as a meditation uh, on the good use of uh, sickness. O oh Lord, let me not henceforth desire health or life, except to spend them for you, with you and in you. You alone know what is good for me. Do therefore what seems best to you. Give to me or take from me. Conform my will to yours and grant that with humble and perfect submission and in holy confidence, I may receive the orders of your eternal providence and they equally adore all that comes to me from you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord God bless you, keep you and strengthen you this day and evermore. Amen.